yes, you're in the right place. Welcome to week eight of the NFL season and FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. Always love having you with us, and you know how we roll. We're breaking down and betting every single game. We're handing out our experts' best bets and, of course, dropping DFS best value plays as well. I'm Lisa Kearney with my guys here in the Los Angeles studio. Ice Cold Exact, our sports betting What's expert, up? Dave Weaver, Super Bowl champion here to my left, James Jones. You guys, we are ready to rock. And on the East Coast, our regular ringer here, Pittsburgh Sports Talk Radio host, there he is. Andrew Filipponi. Hey, yo, guys, it's week eight. So much to get to. More ways to win starts now. And you know we got to kick the show off with the only undefeated team in the league, the 6-0 Philadelphia Eagles hosting the 2-5 and Steelers. Now, Philly's dominance and the Steelers' struggles have been well-documented, right? But here's a stat that sums that up perfectly. The Eagles have a point differential of plus 56. It's second best in the league. Look at the Steelers. Minus 55, worst in the league. We're going to lean into that a little mm. bit. Uh, we're going to bet this game and give it the Judge James treatment. Mm. David Pony, you each pick a side. You argue your case. Judge James here is going to be listening and <laughs> uh, will then rule okay. and issue yeah. his yeah. James judgment. So, James, you get ready with your oh, gavel, yeah. whatever you need. Uh, Dave, you're going to be presenting your case okay. first. And the line on this game, 10 and a half points who do you like I like the Eagles there are, there are so many reasons to like the Eagles number one they're coming off their bye week the Steelers played on Monday night so you got a team with 14 days rest against a team on six days rest mm -hmm. James knows how those bodies can get a little sore when you're getting <laughs> banged up out there but here's the big deal for me is Jalen Hurts has just been a different quarterback this year from last year and even the end of his rookie season through six games this year two interceptions Last year, it was double that, and, and fumbles are down. So it's almost like getting in a time machine and going back a couple of years. That's where I see Kenny Pickett right now. He needs a couple of years, Pony, to get things figured out because right now he is making bad decisions. He could have ran for first down towards the end of the game and threw a pick instead last week. So I think 13 points max for picking the Steelers. So mm. Eagles are going to win this one 31-13. Mm. Judge James, you got to throw the case out. Dave doesn't even have his day straight. They played <laughs> Sunday night, not Monday night. So Whatever. Seven days him, versus 14. Dis, disbar him for this <laughs> activity. Uh, he, Dave, your argument with the Steelers as an underdog is always Tomlin thrives in these situations. Now you're going against your own logic. Tomlin 46, 26, and 3. 20 games over the spread, uh, against the spread, 20 games over 500. As an underdog, he lives for these moments. And look, Philly has taken their foot off the gas in a lot of these games. They started flat against Jacksonville, fell behind 14-0. They blew a 14-point lead against Arizona. They almost blew a 17-point lead to, to Dallas. Uh, James thought that the Cowboys, Cooper Rush might win that game. They almost blew it in the fourth quarter. Ten and a half is way too money, way too much. Take the Steelers. Mm. All right, both sides have rested. You're just uh -huh. sitting there going, mm, yeah, yeah. Mm. All right, bring it strong. Uh, what you got? Who? You can't hold math make against me. This is not about math. The make verdict the is ruling. in, man. The verdict is in. Yeah, yeah. fly. On. Come on, you see it. Bias judge. Fly, Eagles. Fly. fly. All right, listen. Jalen hurts the Philadelphia Eagles are too good of a football team to not beat down the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers are way too vanilla, too plain on the offensive side of the ball. And it's due to the young quarterback, but it's not going to win you ball games. That's why you don't really see the production out of Najee Harris like you should be seeing because they're so plain, right? Stacking the box. They're not winning on the outside consistently. They're just too plain on the offensive side of the ball. And then on the bye week, you go trade for Robert Quinn. You get better on that defensive side of the football. This Philadelphia Eagles has already been playing at a high level, two of the best corners in the National Football League. Fly, <laughs> Eagles, uh, fly. This will be uh, a beatdown. <laughs> you just hear the Philadelphia uh, Eagles. <laughs> uh, all right, there you have it. Dave wins the first case with the argument for the Eagles giving those points the biggest line of the week, sitting there at 10 and a half. How about this matchup in Seattle of two really surprising teams? The 4-3 and three Seahawks lead the NFC West, hosting the 6-1 and one 
Giants. These two teams relying on a couple of really talented young running backs here for the Giants. Of course, Saquon Barkley leads the NFL with 906 yards from scrimmage. Kenneth Walker III has taken over the starting job after uh, in Seattle there after Rashad Penny went out with injury. Walker has 265 yards, three touchdowns in the last two games. The rookie second round pick. How about that stepping up as RB1 mm. now? Uh, same drill as before. James, you're going to yep. judge both sides of the arguments here presented. Coney, you're going to be first this time. Giants getting three on the road. Do they cover that? Lisa, you're so on it here. <laughs> Kenneth Walker is now the favorite to win the offensive rookie of the year on FanDuel. That's how quickly his ascent is. The Rashad Penny injury has been a blessing in disguise. And look, Remember when Geno Smith talked about I didn't write back the haters? The Giants were one. He started over Eli Manning. Eli got mad, and then they benched him unceremoniously because they felt sorry for Eli. The owner stepped in. I think he wants payback, and usually I'd say, ah, that doesn't matter. He's not good enough. He's been great. 11 touchdowns, three interceptions. By the QBR stat, only Mahomes and Josh Allen have been better than Geno Smith. Dave, there is a massive quarterback mismatch in this matchup. That's why I'm going with Seattle. Well, I think it was about three or four weeks ago you called the New York Giants Rodney Dangerfield of the NFL because <laughs> they're getting no respect. And all they've done is win since then. And all they've done is keep being underdogs week in and week out. So nobody believes in the New York Giants. They're 6-1 and one and a three-point dog against the Seahawks. Look, the, the rushing game from the Giants is real. They're one of only two teams that has three games already this year with 200 yards on the ground. And the Seahawks have in my opinion, the worst rushing defense in the NFL, giving up 1,048 yards. Nobody's given up more yards than that. They've given up 500-yard games to rushers and two of them in the same game. Taysom Hill and Kamara both went for over a buck in that game against the Saints. So I think Danny Dimes and Saquon might go for a hundo here. Oh. I, I could see... 250 yards in the ground, and the Giants do what they do. I know, oh, yeah, right. I know it's boring, James. Ooh, I know you think the Giants only run three plays. You hate vanilla, but those James. Three plays, Remember that from the they last. Are, those three days. plays are good. You don't like vanilla working. offense. Giants win working. again. You guys seven sound and like one. my kids. Everyone's talking at the same time. James, you're up. Make your ruling. <laughs> the verdict is in. Listen. I'm off the eyeball yeah. test. When I go eyeball test, They're six I'm and one. all I see is a lucky Giants team. So I'm with Pony on That's this one because judge. I'm just not a believer in the New week. York football Giants yet. And I'm not going to be, be a believer until I see this team look like a 6-1 and one football team. And that's dominate a football game, right? Because this team right now, right, it's one possession games for the last five weeks. They can easily be 0-5 in these last five weeks. Have they been making the plays? Yes, kudos to them. But I don't see a dominant 6-1 and one football team. And I'm with Geno Smith. I'm with Kenneth Walker in this one. I'm with Pete Carroll in this one. I like the Giants, and I'm right with Pony on this one because I'm just not a believer in the Giants. I'm with the Seahawks. Yeah, we'll see what you say mm. next week when they roll right. in a seven and one. Right, he'll if, say the same thing. If, if, and they're fifteen be, and one. If, I'm not a be believer. Dominant, Lisa. Okay, that's all we're looking for here on the show. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna say Kate Stu is closed. Pony wins his argument. Uh, taking the Seahawks, giving the points. We've got another game for you because we have to get to these six and one Bills coming off their bye, hosting the three and four Packers. Cannot wait to hear James's take on this. Uh, talk about two teams going in different directions here, right? The Bills dominating with an offense that ranks in the top two in total yards, passing yards, and scoring. Buffalo currently holds chalk as a Super Bowl favorite on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You can bet it right now. Uh, so yeah, the Packers are up against it. They've lost three in a row. Aaron Rodgers going through one of the roughest stretches of his career statistically. Hasn't thrown for more than 275 yards in nine straight games. That of course includes last season's playoffs. He's calling his guys out for Mr. Simon's mental error, saying it comes up on at least 20% of plays. That's at least one play per drive. <laughs> Buffalo here giving 10 and a half, another really steep line. I'm going to get to you. Hold up. Ten Dave, you're half. in the courtroom first. Present your case. Against Aaron yeah, Rodgers. This is the biggest line, the biggest underdog Aaron Rodgers has ever been. Oh the highest being eight and a half. But this is 10 and a half. But there's a reason, James. 
because they're not a very good football oh. team. They've lost three in a row. I think that the defense in, in saying that the Packers are going to win or cover is that, oh, Aaron Rodgers, there's no way he can lose four games in a row. It's happened. They did it uh, back in 2016, feeling the effects of your retirement. Uh. They lost four in a row. Uh. And Aaron Rodgers even lost five games in a row. You were on that team uh. back in 2000 and bringing up all stuff, eight huh? yeah it was only your second year but they had they had Jordy they had oh. Jennings oh. they had Donald Driver oh. who's he have he has no weapons so uh, to me Buffalo is just going to throttle them mm. offensively score you know 35 and Aaron Rodgers is going to have his game where he throws balls to guys that can't catch it and they score like 10 points 35 10 Dave is going Bills. in right now huh yeah, it, we, we need to restore order in the courtroom because Dave yeah. keeps talking when it's not his turn James <laughs> I hope you dock him for that look yeah. uh Dave citing stats about losing streaks this isn't about wins or losses this is about can you cover it's a 10 and a half point spread the Packers can look kind of bad lose by Eight points, nine points, ten points, and still cash a ticket on Green Bay in this situation. The Bills have blown out teams at home. The combined score is 79 to 10, but man, I just wonder coming off a bye, they get off to a slow start. We know that Aaron Rodgers, you can doubt him at your own peril, at your own risk. He laid down the gauntlet. To me, if Rodgers does not come through and give them a better game this this week, I think it's fair to question him the rest of the season. So I'm not ready to uh, bury him and pile dirt on him. I think this is a kind of do-or-die game for Green Bay, and I think Aaron Rodgers will respond. Mm. I know you'll like that, James. Come on. Give it to me, baby. He's on notice. He's on notice. (laughs) All right, you know the drill. Who won the case? Yeah, first off, uh, Pony won before he even started talking, right? Because we know (laughs) I'm not going to go with Dave on this one. I am going with my dog 24-7. Seven days a week, AR-12, Aaron Rodgers, right? These are the type games to where he shows up and shows out, and we are caught looking at the TV like, what in the world just happened? Did Aaron Rodgers just will his team to victory? This is going to be one of those games, right? Not just only do they cover, but they are going to win this ball game. They are going to make a statement, what? right? This season has been crazy. They have lost to the Washington team. They have lost to the Jets. They have lost to the Giants. And they are going to beat the Buffalo Bills because it's time to respond. And they have a really good football team. They got really good players. It's time to respond. And it's time to put it on the field. And it's going to happen. So, Pony, before you even started talking, the verdict was in, right? You knew I wasn't going with Dave. I'm riding with you, Pony. Packers all day. But I have to say that's how the season has gone. Everything has been yep. backwards, flipped yep. upside down. We have no idea. Every week it is nuts. Mm. Um, all right, you guys, great stuff. The final case goes to Pony, his pick to take the Packers, getting all those points back up the truck. All right, court is adjourned for the day, but there's plenty more coming up on the show. But first, a quick reminder about FanDuel's special no-sweat first bet promotion. FanDuel is giving new customers up to $1,000 back if you don't win your first bet. Yes, you right now, new users can take advantage of the no sweat first bet. Just place a cash bet with FanDuel Sportsbook. If you don't win, you'll automatically get your stake back in free bets. It's that easy. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app and play today. And of course, as you're watching this show, you know exactly how to bet and what you need to bet. Uh, Plenty more still to come here on more ways to win underdogs or favorites. Which is the better bet? Our experts give out two picks from each category that are locks to cash this week. Plus, we're stacking your DFS lineups with the best value plays of the week. More ways to win is just getting started. We're coming right back. All right, you guys, we roll on here on more ways to win. Some people prefer betting underdogs. Others prefer betting favorites. But the smart better knows that you should bet both. And look for the best value, of course, as always. So we're giving out our best bets for each in this week's Dog and Pony Show segment. Our special guest, Chad Millman, will be playing the dog role. Of course, the chief content officer of the Action Network. And Pony, well, is playing the part of Pony. Uh, Giving out his favorites here in this segment. So, Pony, I'm going to start with you. Give me your favorite favorite for week eight. Uh, Lane, three and a half at home against Arizona. I'm not going to get into the Kyler Murray uh, Call of Duty narrative, which is interesting, though, because his numbers plummeted last year once that video game was released, and I guess it just came out. That's what my uh, uh, nephews tell me. But anyways, look, Minnesota has scored at least 28 points at home in every game this year. They're 4-0. and 
They are a different team in the comfortable surroundings and an environment that that Kirk Cousins trusts, not a prime time, not on the road. So that is a high baseline for Arizona to keep up with that kind of scoring away from home. That's such a small number. I'm shocked that the Vikings are only a three and a half point favorite. I'm going to take them against the cards. All right, let Chad, let's get to you here and listen to an underdog that you like to cover. Who are you looking at? All right, Lisa, I'm going to give you a little bit of a bonus because I'm going to be fade and pony on the Cardinals-Vikings game. I love the Cardinals in this spot, but I will also tell you I love, love, love the Detroit Lions at plus three and a half. Now is the time to buy in to the Lions. They are coming off back-to-back -back terrible losses. They are getting a Miami team that won in prime time that people are high on because Tua is back. The Lions will have DeAndre Swift. He's been practicing in full practices all week off of his shoulder injury. They are expected to have Amon Ross St. Brown back. This is a different team when they have those two weapons. Plus, we are getting a team that is desperate. We all love Dan Campbell. The NFL fandom is better when Dan Campbell is a head coach. We need the Lions to win this game outright. And I will tell you, teams in this spot since 2005 cover at a 61% spread when they are coming off of a bad loss and the public is fading them. That is the Lions right now. That is a huge sample size north of 200 games at 61%. So uh, give me the Lions at plus three and a half. Okay, Pony, you're up with your second favorite that you really like this week. Who are you looking at? Well, I think most public bettors, most of the average Joes that Chad likes to talk about, they look at the line in Patriots Jets and say, wait a minute. Is that line right? The Jets should be a two and a half point favorite. No, New England is accurately favored. Here's a big reason why. I want to see what the Jets are without Brees Hall. They suffered, in my opinion. Running backs usually don't count for a lot. My, my estimation, they suffered a devastating injury. That guy could have won Offensive Rookie of the Year. He had 75 yards and a touchdown against Denver when he went out in that game. He's been a revelation for them during their four-game winning streak. Yes, their defense has been impressive, but we're now subtracting and taking away, my opinion, their biggest playmaker. I'm going to take Belichick to figure it out against a Jets offense that now is in scramble mode. I believe they cover two and a half. Okay, we're going to recap your bets here in just a moment. But Chad, let's get your uh, let's get your underdog take here, and you're going the other way on that one, huh? I am. I guess oh. it's a theme for this segment. But look, I like the Jets in this spot. The line actually makes no sense to me. It, it, it makes no sense that the Jets, who are performing the way they are, who defensively are not just a team that is holding other teams from scoring or keeping other teams from scoring, they are making really big plays. They have excellent people on the edges right now for this team. And Robert Sala has basically decided, if I'm going to coach and I am going to have my job be in jeopardy as he was early in the year, I am not going to put it in the hands of Zach Wilson. And so while I agree, losing Brees Hall is a big deal, there are other ways for the team to keep the ball out of the Patriots' hands. And on the other side, Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi, there's clearly discontent in that locker room with the quarterback situation and what Bill Belichick did. Right now, normally I would say, you want to fade the team like the Jets, like the Jets that have been coming off a couple of back-to-back -back wins, and you want to get on the team like the Patriots who came off of a primetime loss, there's going to be value. But the thing that I look at most is I'm getting a very short home underdog. I'm getting the Jets at plus two and a half. To me, that takes precedent over every other signal that you're looking at, so give me the home team as a dog. You see that sharp money. You saw that on the, uh, the graphic there. Moving on over to those Jets. All right, Pony, let's quickly recap your two favorite favorites for week eight. You like Minnesota at home, giving the points against Arizona. You also like the Patriots on the road, giving the points to the Jets. Chad, here's a look at your dogs. You like the Lions getting the points against Miami. Also, conversely to what Pony put up, the Jets getting points against the Patriots. Awesome stuff by you guys. You can bet these dogs and favorites right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And, of course, you can get more of Chad's insight by listening to the Favorites podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Also, make sure to download the Action Network app for expert picks, live scores, and stats. Thanks, guys. And just like that, it is now time for Dave's big payday parlay. I do have to feel, I feel like I have to say it like that. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. You've heard of people betting just a few dollars to win tens of thousands of dollars. Well, 
parlaying a bunch of bets is how they do it. Dave is going to give us his big payday parlay for week eight. Come Dave, on, Dave. I like the Make voice. The money. Show us yeah, how to parlay. You, you see it on Twitter all the time. Somebody puts, oh, I yeah. bet 10 bucks and I won $20,000. So mm. I, I, I'd bet $20. Look, everybody likes to bet a game straight. That's there fine. But what if you're right about everything? You want to make sure that that's if, if that's you have me. a perfect week, yeah, you're getting paid. So <laughs> I'm going to pick eight games. Yeah. I'm not even going to involve the spreads. These are all money lines. So mm. I just need these teams to win, and then we'll kind of see how the, the bankroll grows. So Let's $20 parlay. We're going to start with the Lions. Yeah, I think two is much better at home, 13-3, and three, than on the road where he's 6-6. Six and six. So mm. I think the Lions get the job done there. Good start. Uh, the Cardinals. Hopkins made a big difference last week for this team. You he's back. So that's two already. It's gone up to $131.80. Yeah, I believe in Hopkins. But we're not stopping there. Uh, Saints, a little bit of a baby home dog against your Raiders. Mm. You probably won't agree with that, but yeah. it's growing. It, it helps it out to get up to almost $300 there now for that $20 three-teamer. But we're doing an eight-teamer. I think the here. Jets continue to roll. They're going to pull a slight upset the at Jets. home over the Patriots. Mm -hmm. So now we're up to uh, almost $600. Yeah. We'll, we'll add four more teams here. We're going to go with the Panthers. They're playing hard right now. I like it. They want want Coach Wilkes to get like this full-time job. They'll upset the Falcons. Yes, Sixth sir. team is going to be the Giants. I think they can go to Seattle, continue that ground game, pound in for that win. Now we're all, all just like that. We're up to $3,600. But we're going to add two more teams. The Rams seek a little bit of revenge on the, the Niners because like they it. lost earlier this like year. It. Now we're up to $7,300. And we'll close it out Monday night. I think the Browns can represent. I have a lot of home underdogs mm -hmm. in this. The Browns can represent and beat Ooh. the Bengals. Now that twenty dollars is worth how much is that? Nineteen hundred four hundred. No, nineteen thousand. Nineteen thousand four hundred and thirty-nine dollars and eight. Oh, so, I'm, I'm making this. Is that enough for you? I believe in you. Okay, and so, so, so I'm making this twenty-dollar so bill. Can, yeah, you're gonna win a car. I'm gonna win that, and I'm gonna act a fool too. So, you know, Lisa, sometimes <laughs> you just I would love you just to have know what that means, <laughs> you just have to gamble because you can you can hit big, you can bet small and win a lot. And if yeah. you lose twenty bucks, place we your bet, fun. Lisa. Place your bet. I think it was was it season two we had a guy on that place oh, a one dollar, dollar. eleven oh. leg parlay all hit it was he That's made right. over 10 grand on one wow. buck one buck i will have to bet a lot to have some fun dave mm -hmm. thank you that's awesome i'm so psyched for this segment <laughs> we'll roll it out every week great stuff by these guys uh look at those odds skyrocket that's the whole idea here tail dave or create your own parlay to win big on the fanduel sportsbook app you can do it right now and you can also get in on the fun with daily fantasy see i told you you're in the right place we got you fanduel has a bunch of dfs contests live right now where you can win thousands of dollars on FanDuel.com. Of course, the key to success is value at each position. Jim Sonis is the senior writer and analyst for Number Fire. He's got his best value plays for week eight. What's up, Jim? Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, it's a pretty tough week for value, but I do feel good about the three guys we're going to discuss here for today. That begins with George Pickens at $5,500. He's in a super negative game script here, and it's not a, a situation I want to chase all that often, but Pickens is a very good football player. 27% of Kenny Pickens' deep throws have gone to Pickens, and Pickens has caught every single one of those thus far. They're going to have to throw quite a bit to keep pace, and I think Pickens grades out well as a result. Other side of that game, we find Dallas Goddard at $5,900 which is way too low for the yardage upside he has had so far this year. Goddard ranks fourth among tight ends in yards per route run per next-gen stats. Goddard has 60-plus yards in four out of six games and 70-plus yards three times, so for $5,900, he is tough to turn down. At running back, I want to go to Raheem Mostert, $6,800, facing off with Detroit. Good matchup for Mostert, who's had a good role, 90 yards in scrimmage per game across his four games as the Dolphins lead back in this offense. He does grade out well once again here here in a potential shootout. I would say as well, Lisa, if we get no Zeke Elliott on Sunday, Tony Pollard would immediately become the top value at any position on this week eight main slate. That's the stuff. Thank you, Jim. Set your lineups at FanDuel.com. Follow Jim on Twitter at Jim Saunas and check out his Covering the Spread podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And we are just getting rolling here. Up next, more game previews, including a couple of huge matchups featuring some big-time rivalries. Can the Jets finally end the Patriots' 12-game winning streak against Gang Green? And on the West Coast, can the Rams end the 49ers' seven-game winning streak against LA. We're going to get into all of it. Plus our experts hand out their best bets of the week in the form of a spread money line and total. See which teams they have to cash this week. We are coming right back. 
Welcome back, everybody. It is time to pit our experts against our ex-player and break down some of the biggest matchups here in Week 8. Each of our betting experts will debate a game with James, nine-year NFL vet, Super Bowl champ. I'm going to get him a T-shirt and just point to it. <laughs> We've got on-field experience versus what I like to call lovingly recliner researchers. Uh, we're starting our expert versus ex-player battle with an AFC East rivalry game here. The Jets are 5-2, and two, hosting the 3-4 and four Patriots. And get this, mm. New England has won 12 straight in this series. Uh, fans on both sides are like, yeah, I know. And the Patriots are two and a half point favorites at MetLife. Dave, I'm going to start with you. Which side do you like here? Well, I mean, they did have Tom Brady for a lot of those 12 straight wins. Uh -huh. They don't have him this year. Who do they have? I don't know if the coach Belichick even knows. Mm. He's going back and forth between the quarterbacks. But I didn't like what I saw last week with the mm. Patriots losing to the Bears. The Bears. They lose at home to the Bears as an eight and a half point favorite. It's not a good thing. And, you know, I looked it up. I figured, okay, when Belichick loses as a big favorite, he's going to come back the next week, be fired up, and win. That's not the case. The last two times that his team has lost as a touchdown favor more, they lost the following week, too. So what I see right now, this is just a rut that New England can't get out of. Mm. I'm taking the Jets to snap yeah. that long streak. This is the one. Not going to be 13 and to 12. Yeah, well, I, th I think the uh, Patriots are saying God is good, right? Because even when we are in a rut, we find a way to beat the Jets. Tom Brady been gone for a couple years now over there, right? And they still are beating the Jets 12 in a row. That lets me know that Bill Belichick knows how to beat the Jets, right? And Robert Sala, he's keeping the ball out of his quarterback's hands for a reason, right? You just lost your best player on the offensive side of the ball, Brees Hall. I think that is going to be a big blow. This Belichick defense is going to play well. I like the Patriots in this one. 13 in a row mm -hmm. for Big Bill. We saw quickly last week, right? <laughs> Maybe there's a quarterback controversy there uh -huh. in New England, it but it is Mac Jones that's taken more than 90% of the snaps in practice this week, so it looks like it will be Mac Jones under center. All right, Pony, our expert for the next game, the 3-4 and four Niners are at the 3-3 three and three Rams. Ooh. Big NFC West battle. This is another rivalry that's been one-sided lately. Like yeah. The Niners have won seven straight regular season games against L.A. Pony, the Niners are favored by one and a half in this one. How are you playing Lisa, it? Lisa, you're so smart because stats can lie. The game you're forgetting is the NFC Championship game, which the Rams won in L.A. against San Francisco. And there's a scheduling quirk in this game too, James, because remember... The Rams played Carolina before their bye, so they just saw Christian McCaffrey. They're prepared for him. They know how to adjust, I think, to that. I think that gives them a leg up in this matchup. Same thing last year. They lost week 18 to San Francisco, and they got payback the next time around. It's going to happen again. Pony. Pony, we can't be watching the same football as these games are being played. This year, last year, we can't be watching the same football. The Niners own the Rams, right? When the Rams step on the field against the San Francisco 49ers, it's already in their head mentally. Not in the biggest game, the James. Niners they beat him in the tougher, championship. Stronger, mentally tougher. Kyle Shanahan out coaching Sean McVay every single mm -hmm. time. They did win one out of seven times, and it happened to be the, the bigger, the one. bigger game. But that <laughs> doesn't mean nothing. This ain't the NFC Championship, and this is going to oh, be man. eight to one for the San Francisco 49ers. I'm telling you, it is a okay. mental thing with this team, right? Every time the Rams play the San Francisco 49ers, and they should have lost that NFC Championship game if Tart just catches the football. But that's if was a fifth, right? But with that being said, they make way too many mistakes when they play the Niners. They press too much. The Niners are in their head. That's on the sideline, including the coach, and that is the players. I like the Niners in this one, and I think it's going to be another beatdown for the Niners, and we're going to be looking up in the fourth quarter. Matthew Stafford's out. Cooper Cup is out because it's going to be a beatdown. Nope. The Niners own the Rams. We'll see how it plays out, but that was an interesting note on CMC mm. there. All right, Dave, you're back in for the Cardinals and Vikings, so let's get to it. Give some love to this 5-1 Minnesota team that's first in the NFC North. Cardinals are 3-4, and four, coming off a win last week in DeAndre Hopkins' first game of the season. I know you like that. In fact, they're 9-2 and two over the last two years when he starts. Vikings, three-and-a-half-point road favorites. Dave? Yeah, and what are, they, what are they when he doesn't start? Something like two mm. and five or even yeah. worse than yeah. that you know they need him we love to to argue here opinions but there's one undisputed fact 
the Cardinals are just a better team when DeAndre Hopkins is on the field. And, and, and that's a fact. And he's back. And you saw the difference he made last week against the Saints. This is a good line. You know, to be getting three and a half, they could go in there and win this game. And I think they're going to do that. But to be able to lose by a field goal and still cover is a good thing. I think this will be a very close game. And I like the Cardinals. Dave, to be honest with you, Lisa, to be honest with you, I never thought this whole season after watching the Cardinals play that I will pick them to win any game, even if they was playing the Chandler Bears, and that is my little kids, and they're 11. <laughs> right, I did not think that I would pick it up. But you are exactly right. With DeAndre Hopkins in the lineup, they are a totally different ball club. And the defense showed up last week, right? Two takeaways. They scored on defense. They started to get after the passer. The defense showed up. I think they make it hard on Kirk Cousins. J.J. Watt, I think they bring some pressure after him. They get after him. They make it hard on him. And Kyler Murray is going be Kyler Murray with DeAndre Hopkins out there. I like the Arizona Cardinals winning this ball game and going out there and beating the Minnesota Vikings and Kirk Cousins playing hot football right now. All right. All right. Take them on the money line. All right. Let's get to this next game. The Battle of Ohio. The Bengals are 4-3 and three after their 0-2 mm. start. And Joe Burrow and that Bengals offense Joe, Joe. is hot. Woo. <laughs> Burrow is averaging 312 yards in the last five games. 12 touchdown, touchdowns. Just one pick taking care Balling. of that football and then on the other side of the ball yeah. the Browns have lost four in a row after that two and one start but Nick Chubb yeah. man I've talked about him uh, off this program on radio a bit he does lead the league in rushing yards not sure we saw that coming pony Cincinnati is giving three and a half here well I'm just still stunned that James lets his kid play for the Bears I mean, that's really a <laughs> shocking uh, development yeah, that's, um, that's a good point pony. yeah look <laughs> You know, styles make fights. And for whatever reason, the Bengals, the AFC North, they dominated it last year. They're 0-2 against it this year. Lost to the Steelers at home. Lost to the Ravens. They are bottom half in run defense. And Nick Chubb, in addition to leading the league, Lisa, he's super efficient. 5.9 yards per carry. He has broken more tackles than any running back in the NFL. So it's in Cleveland. It's a night game. They've got to win to stop the bleeding. I'll take them getting that hook three and a half to cover in this game. Pony, I agree with you, man. Nick Chubb is, he is a phenom. I mean, we see him in the weight room in the off season squatting a thousand pounds and all that. He cannot be tackled one-on-one -on -one by anybody in the National Football League. But all I see is Jacoby Brissett. And all I see is Jacoby Brissett not playing at a high level. And all I can hear is Lisa running down them numbers of JoJo Burrow the last couple weeks, strictly balling. And then with my eyeballs, all I see is probably the baddest man in the National Football League and Jamar Chase, who's making this game look easy. Every time he catches a pass, it looks like he's playing against boys. I mean, it's run after catch. He's stiff arming. He running away from people. It looked like they're not even trying to get him. And then as I watch the tape, I'm like, man, and the boy is just that good. I like Cincinnati staying hot. I am a believer in JoJo Burrow way more than I'm a believer in Jacoby Brissett. The Browns take another L without their star quarterback in Watson. I'm taking JoJo Burrow in this one. I hate to say it, those mm. Bengals are a yeah. fun team to watch. Dangerous. All right, you guys, great stuff. Week 8 about to kick off. We'll see who knows more, our experts or our ex-player. Hit up the FanDuel Sportsbook now to pick your sides and place your bets. All right, now let's get to our best bets here. Our experts are giving them out in the form of a spread, money line, and total bet. It's part of our weekly competition where we, each of the guys get 100 virtual dollars for those three bets. Dave, you're up first. Let's hear your picks for week eight. Yeah, I've been lighting Benjamins on fire in this segment the last few weeks, so we need to turn this around. Uh, Pony, I'm going to start with the Cardinals. I think that's the good line. Anytime you can get three and a half with a team that you think is a better team and they can win, that's the Arizona Cardinals. I'm switching it up. I've kind of been going to $60 on my best bet. I'm going to make it $50 on the Cardinals. My money line bet is going to be the Carolina Panthers. I really do believe that this team has changed with the firing of Rule and, and, and Wilkes taking over, and they want to give him that extended contract and make him not just the interim head coach, but the long-term head coach. So you can see that this team is, is different over the last couple of weeks. And then as far as the uh, total, you know, Seahawks seems like they always go over, and I think the Giants are going to put up a lot of points on the ground in this game. So New York Giants, Seahawks over the 44 and a half for the remaining $30.
Dave, are you a sharp better? Or is that what you are? Do we count when you make a bet that it changes lines and gets on Chad Millman's right arm? Just curious. Uh, I think he um, called me the uh, the opposite of that. Whatever. Okay. A Joe or uh, a square. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to start with the Panthers too. Hey, PJ Walker, very impressive in that win against the Bucks. Super efficient. Two touchdown passes. Four and a half seems like too many to a Falcons team that came crashing back down to earth last week. So 40 there. 40 bucks on the Saints to beat the Raiders on the money line. Andy Dalton going to stay in at quarterback. Four touchdowns last week. The Raiders winless on the road, giving up at least 24 points in all those games. So 40 there. Now my last one, the under in the backup quarterback bowl. I don't know what's going on with these teams. Heineke and Ellinger. It sounds like a preseason game in August. I'm betting the under 20 bucks on that one. You should hear the side commentary from James over here. It's amazing. All right. Uh, some interesting strategies there. We will see which one is the best after this weekend. Of course, air the results on next week's show. Again, hit up the Vandal Sportsbook app now to place your bets before kickoff. Coming up, it's Moneyline Moneymaker Time, my favorite segment. James gives out his underdog upset special. See who he's riding with this week. We are coming right back. Keep that sign right there. <laughs> Thanks for hanging with us here in week eight. Welcome back to more ways to win here on FanDuel TV. We're shouting out some of our betting markets here with rapid fire predictions. Giddy up and get my guys in here. You know how this drill goes. I give you the line, you give me your pick. You have 15 seconds or less to bet it. Dave. Chicago getting nine and a half points at Dallas. Yeah, I don't think that's enough points. Dak does not mess around when he's supposed to win big. He does. The last six times he's been favored by eight or more points, five and one against the spread, and winning those games by 42, 40, 31, 25, and 15. A blowout with the Bears coming off the short week. Pony, uh, lucky for Denver, Russell Wilson spent four of the eight hours on the plane doing high knees and butt kicks <laughs> up and down. So Denver against Jacksonville here. This game is in London. Broncos getting two and a half. Yeah, and a good team to run into. Remember, Jacksonville, before Matt Ryan was benched, couldn't sack him, gave up over 300 yards. I think Russell Wilson actually rebounds and lifts the Broncos up to a cover in this game. Well, we know jet lag does not affect him. Dave, the Dolphins are in Detroit. Lions, three and a half point home dog. You know, the Lions have scored six total points in their last two games, but they're getting DeAndre Swift back. When he's in the lineup, they're averaging 30, almost 32 points a game. This will be a totally different Lions team this week than we've seen over the last three or four weeks. I think they pull off the upset. Pony, the Colts have benched Matt Ryan for the remainder of the season. Indy, uh, Sam Ellinger is your QB. The Colts are home giving three to the Commanders. Yeah, and Ellinger's mobile, which is a big deal because the Colts have had the worst offensive line in the NFL. Heineke got lucky last week. I counted five plays where the Packers dropped interceptions, including a pick six did happen. Now he's a backup quarterback. I'm going to go with Indy to get a little shot in the arm from Sam Ellinger. And those markets available for you right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You heard his voice. We're bringing James back in here from Quick Picks to Upset Alerts. We're back on the money line and dropping money line money makers for you right now. And we're giving him the bet emoji treatment. All right, guys. Oh, James, yeah. you're on the hot seat again this week. Yes. Give me an underdog that you think is going to win outright this weekend. Guys, of course, are ready with their <laughs> emojis to react. Who do you like? Well, I think it's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. That uh -huh. AR-12, Aaron Rodgers, is 10 points. I'm a 10 and a half point underdog. Aaron Rodgers, this is crazy. Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers are going to upset Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. And all I'm going to tell you two is, <laughs> I don't care what sign y'all put up. All I'm going to tell you two is, don't bet against Aaron Rodgers. Do not bet against AR-12. I'm not even going to give you all the stuff. Don't bet against AR-12. I would take a picture of it. Pause it on ponies. Pause it on Dave's. Don't bet against AR-12. <laughs> he we just get lost to done. Taylor Heineken. He's mm -hmm. going to beat Josh Allen now. All of a sudden, Why are you bringing up just old stuff? because <laughs> it's not old. It's new. That's it's past. like a few days ago. We go to the next week. I was double checking the odds <laughs> on, the, on the app right now. Man, do you see that? Plus 400. Okay, if you're a roll with James, you can bet it right now. James has another upset pick. This what is, is going to be a good segment to bring back next week and rewind <laughs> so I can let these boys know that I'm right. Um, 
I like Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions upsetting Tua and those Miami Dolphins, right? You get two of your best players back on the offensive side of the ball, St. Brown and Swift, and you're running back. And it's desperation time, right? We don't want people to start calling for our coach. We want to go out here and start playing well. We know how much this Lions team loves Dan Campbell, loves their coach, right? They come out. They fight for him. They win this ball game. And they are a totally different team when Swift is in that huddle, right? He can run it. He can catch it. Jared Goff is more comfortable. You get your best receiver back, right? So Jared Goff should be able to come out there and play at a high level and put some points up to be able to help this defense. I like them upsetting the Miami Dolphins and Tua in this one right here. All right, wow. guys. Bang, when bang. He, okay. When he's not talking about the Packers, his brain actually works. <laughs> bang, bang. Wow. <laughs> there Are we go. You, did, there, is there anything yeah. else to say, you guys? Nothing else to say. Money sign. Yep. Cha-ching. <laughs> All right, you guys. Awesome stuff. If you at home agree with James, put up your emojis and also hop on the FanDuel Sportsbook app now to get that plus money before kickoffs on Sunday. Great stuff, you guys. All right, from underdog winners to daily fantasy studs, FanDuel offers a bunch of DFS content where you can win thousands of dollars just by starting the right player. So right now, we're bringing you ringers well worth their high price tag. We do this every single week. You're welcome, America. No, it's so fun. Jim Sonis is the best. He's back with the goods. Jim, who's on your can't-miss list here in Week 8? Thanks, Lisa, and our stud section for week number eight. We're going to start things off with a guy who doesn't necessarily have a stud salary, but he has stud usage. That is Alvin Kamara here at $7,800. He has a 41.7% red zone share in the games he has played for the Saints so far this year. So despite no touchdowns, we've seen good usage for Kamara, a lot of carries, a lot of targets, and I'd expect Kamara to score maybe once, maybe twice in this game against the Raiders on Sunday. Number two for me, Christian McCaffrey, $8,500, making his full debut with the 49 Niners did get some action last week, but now I think we'll see the usage cap being lifted in McCaffrey in this scheme. I kind of don't care how tough the matchup is with the Rams. I think McCaffrey in this situation could go nuclear, so $8,500 could be the lowest salary we get him at for the rest of the way. My top stud for week number eight is going to be Tyreek Hill, though, facing off with the with the Detroit Lions. Really good match. Ben Hill has had insane usage so far this year. A 32% overall target share with 40% of the deep targets for the Dolphins across the season. I don't mind pairing him with Raheem Mostert at running back. I think that makes total sense. And Tua Tungavailoa at quarterback. I think, Lisa, that's week where we just load up on the Dolphins to take advantage of a plus matchup inside a dome. My man. Thank you, Jim. Set your lineups now at FanDuel.com. Follow Jim on Twitter at Jim Sonis as well. And another reminder to check out his daily Covering the Spread podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Week 8 is almost here. We're so excited. We guarantee to bet that full slate of games, and we make good on that next. Plus, what's the best value bet to win each conference? Our guys are going to weigh in on that next as well. You're You're watching FanDuel TV. Keep it right there. We'll be right back. Raiders. (laughs) Promise is a promise, man. We break down every game on this show, so we're wrapping up with a week eight slate with some more quick picks here, so we're going to get right to it. Dave, let's start with the four and two Titans at the one, four and one Texans. Tennessee giving two and a half here. Yeah, we got to keep an eye on uh, Ryan Tannehill's status going into uh, kickoff. He left last week's stadium in a walking boot. If oh. Malik Willis has to play, I'm on the Texans here. Mm. All right, Pony, the two and four Raiders at the two and five Saints. Las Vegas, one and a half point favorite. Close line. Road splits with the Raiders are real. They're 0-3, and Derek Carr has four interceptions in those games. I'm going to take the Saints. James, you've got the 2-5 and five Panthers at the 3-4 and four Falcons. Atlanta giving four and a half. Pony. <laughs> hey, I'm taking the Falcons in this one right here. Hey, I love Coach Wilkes. I think they fight for him. But Mariota is playing good football. I like Marcus, the way he's playing right now, using his legs, using his arm, right? Some explosive plays down the field last week. I like the Falcons in this one. All right, great stuff, guys. We've hit some spreads, money lines, and totals throughout this show, but now I want to focus on a couple of futures bets that are very popular at the FanDuel Sportsbook right now. Which team will win the AFC, and who's taking down the NFC? Mm. We're going to get everybody back in here. You can see the odds right there on your screen. Bills, the heavy favorites here. Mm -hmm. Dave, tell me you're not taking chalk, please, for the low. Do you see any value (laughs) down this list? Bring it to me. Don't the Bengals jump out there at plus 1,100 the way that JoJo's playing right now? I mean, I think that's a pretty good number. No, 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 no,
The Buffalo Bills, Stephon Diggs, the Buffalo Bills, this Buffalo Bills defense, Von Miller, the Buffalo Bills. I'm taking the Buffalo There's Bills. There's no odds there. Right. Joe Burrow has only one interception since that Steelers week one disaster. I'm with Dave, but the bigger story is he's abandoned the Chargers, Lisa. He's done I with did. L.A. You picking JoJo to lose this week. Now you picking JoJo to win the AFC. Oh, yeah, well, you are first, something, Pony. First four seasons <laughs> of this show, Hero, the Browns every year from the beginning. All right, let's do the same with the uh, and the NFC side here. The 6-0 Eagles, big favorites to win the conference here. Dave, who do you like? You know, I've not been on the Buccaneers because the odds were so low to start the year, but this is probably the time to get them, plus 700. They're going to be a default winner in division, so Tom Brady's going to get into the playoffs. <gasps> Isn't that all you need? <laughs> And we lost one. One is down. It's about odds, James. <laughs> I know he's the gold and got seven rings and all that type stuff. But you said my Packers are stinky. The Bucks are stinky. But I'm taking my Packers, right? You got better odds right here. Aaron Rodgers, we about to see the Super Bowl matchup right here this weekend. All right, you got a chance to see it twice. Packers. Oh, look at us. We're the lucky ones. Pony, what you got? I think, the, I think the one seed is in play for the Vikings at 5-1. and one. The Eagles still have to play the Giants uh, and Cowboys in that division. Bears and Lions for Minnesota. I like plus 650. All right, there it is. All of those futures, all of these markets, hundreds of them are available for you right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And that is a wrap here. Week 8 is here. We've got you ready. Check out all the bets we talked about and so much more right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And remember, we've got your back every single week. Join us Thursday and Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern time right here on FanDuel TV. Saturday and Sunday, 8 a.m. Eastern time. Thanks for hanging with us. Enjoy Week 8. Good luck with your bets. We'll see you back here next week.